How you doing everyone? My name is Ryan and this is Charlie and welcome back to This Week in Boxing. Um, before we start on the fights, end of the show last week, I said Charlie about his TNT top, he's doubling down with yeah. another one. It wasn't last week, it was the week before. It was the week before. The week How can you double it down? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Ch Charlie the Troublemaker, that's what we call him. Alright then, let's move forward quickly. Let's start with, I don't even want to call it fights. Let's start with last night's card. Send it to me. From the zone by Sowerland, Misfits Boxing. I'm going to start this off straight away. I don't care what anyone says. It was by far the worst spectacle of boxing I've seen in my life. To be fair, it's not boxing, is it? It's not boxing. I don't so, know what we're talking I don't about. Think, I don't think they try and even promote it as boxing or sell it as boxing it's it's like a form of entertainment based around boxing isn't it it's not but, i mean <laughs> even after fights after i mean you have um logan paul uh, we'll get to that in a I'm second not, no i'm just saying i'm just just putting it into context after the fight that you you try to call boxing he was calling out Rey mysterio so i think <laughs> we know it's not boxing it's 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 probably sports entertainment it's probably so, about right and it let, based around boxing let me tell you my evening last night i went out for dinner came back home tyler the young lion was sitting down watching this misfits rubbish i came in against this tall guy versus some mma type guy and they said it is for the misfits world light heavyweight title and they had a belt they are trying to promote this thing as a legitimate... Yeah, look at your face. Yeah, They had a world title belt. The Misfits World Championship. And I'm like, Tyler, what the hell is this? This is absolutely a pants. The guy started the fight by running across the ring. Yeah. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, it's for Tyler, though, isn't it? That's, it's for that age group. Um, I wouldn't say that age group, but it's a, a new fan base. I don't think necessarily age group. It's a, okay. it's a new fan base. And that they called it Misfits title, so it's a Misfits no, title. No, world title, world title. Yeah, Misfits world and they title. Had belts. Within, yeah, but in that realm, they have belts. Not, they don't right. try. And, they don't even try and palm it off as boxing. I love it. They so, even trying to palm it so off. So hear the joke now. They're boxing. They're wrestling commentators. Yeah. So hear the joke. Yeah, I saw they had um old school Todd Grisham and um the coach on there. There you go. All right. Hear the joke now. The next two fights was for the lightweight world Misfit champion and the middleweight world Misfit. They had three. World title fights on the card last night. If that's the case, I might be the Misfits heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, I think you're taking it too seriously, mate. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. As a place, it's just not boxing. It's not boxing. So we're talking about it because it's based around boxing and it's a talking point. Like it's double, I don't think they try it and call it even after the fights. It's certain. The, 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 the fights were terrible. Certain athletes were saying, I call them athletes, were saying that, you know, <laughs> they were almost, almost saying that they um separating it from boxing. You know, even after the main event, you know, they was talking about whether Tommy Fury was going back to real boxing or staying <laughs> in, what do you All call right. it? Um, misfits. Mis well, not Misfits, but YouTube. Uh, um, yeah, YouTube or, uh, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's it is a, a se it's separate from boxing. You know, there right. was real boxing on last night and there was that entertainment based around boxing. Um, that Salt Pappy I mentioned last week got knocked out as well. Salt Pappy? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, this thing was terrible. This thing was terrible. I can't believe I watched it, yeah? I watched it, I, I, I was... I was so unhappy watching it. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was shocking. It but was you watched absolutely it. Sh but you watched it. I watched it strictly for today. You watched to it. To prove my point, yeah? And I didn't pay for it. I was not paying for it. Yeah, oh, Tyler's going to speak to his mum. Let, let, oh, somebody paid for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, oh, yeah. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go with, the, with one of the events from that card. Logan Paul versus Dillian Dennis. Question first. Did Dillian Dennis even throw a punch in the six rounds? Yeah, again, I think they were more concerned whether he would turn up. And look, if that was a real... A proper proper fight after what happened a couple of days before you know if somebody got i mean I, 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 yeah i mean I, i've taken a nick off of a, 
a shed and, and, and I, I wouldn't get into a fight. You know, if somebody had licked someone with a microphone, the fight would be called off. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it wouldn't happen. But because of what that event and that realm is, or, mm -hmm. not realm, or that boxing world, um, that fight was allowed to happen because everyone probably knew that this guy, what's his name, Dillian Dennis, yeah. wasn't really a threat. Because no. if he was fighting a real boxer with that level of cut, it never would have, the fight would never have happened. Do you know, never would have happened. Logan Paul fought the entire fight with his hands about this low around his waist. He didn't even raise his hands up to actually... Be, like, what, what the other guy was doing was this. Yeah, like, I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was absolutely terrible. It was entertaining. I mean, there, was, there was nothing entertaining about it. All right, the, okay, so would you say that the last, what, 60 seconds was entertaining when he tried to take him down? I don't, look, listen. But I, what happened between round one or five? You, you know what I think about the whole thing. I'm not interested in any of it. But it was, I can see, I'm playing devil's advocate slightly, but the storyline, and I didn't really watch the build-up as much as maybe others, but because of the build-up and the storyline, people were concerned whether this guy would actually turn up and he did turn up you know because they said in other fights he, he he's not bothered to turn up um so he turned up he didn't turn up to fight you're right he turned up to do what he was doing but what i found is i was watching to see if something might happen yeah if something might happen then he started trying to grab <laughs> if this was real boxing and it was actually sanctioned i don't know yeah. if it's sanctioned or not he should have had his purse withheld because he didn't fight no. No, if that was real boxing, he'd have his purse withheld. Or he'd have been disqualified. He didn't throw a punch. Again, I think you're re re referencing it as real boxing. It ain't real boxing. Yeah. It's, it, it's like the storyline was built up. He insulted his fiance, I think, you know, and all that good stuff. It is. It's, it's like WWE. It really is. And, um, yeah. And, and then oh. he he gets his, you know, the, 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 the well, I don't know if you call him hero because yeah. he was getting booed. So, but the, uh, uh, the hero uh, gets his redemption in the ring. It's just, cool. it's, it's just cool. like, it cool. is just sports entertainment. Cool. Call, call me negative. I had more fun mowing my garden than watching that fight. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. You're, 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 you're watching it as a boxing fight. You don't watch it. <laughs> you got two non-boxers in the ring. It, it, it was, you got two non-boxers in. You got some... A, a YouTube blogger and an MMA is MMA and was he actually good at MMA? I don't even I don't even know. All right, then. let's go to the main event on that card. KSI versus Tommy Fury. Loads of controversy over this fight. Everyone has an opinion. It's been literally a fifty-fifty one. I've done a video on TikTok last night. Um, thank you all for watching the TikTok. It's got thousands and thousands of views. Thank you very much. But the comment section is literally up and down. KSI won, Tommy Fury won. It was this, this, it wasn't that. It was this, it wasn't that. It has really split the audience. Who cares? <clears throat> okay. Let me, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to be a hypocrite. I don't think anyone cares. I'm going to be a hypocrite. Let me tell you I'm going to be a hypocrite. As much as I wanted Tommy Fury to end this YouTube world of boxing, as much as I, did, I wanted KSI to get knocked out and lose because... I don't count this thing as boxing. In my opinion, KSI won that fight fair and square. Who cares? The only thing I took out of that fight, the only thing I took out of that fight, and it wasn't really even a fight, was that Tommy, Tommy, that bad. Tommy Fury is now officially a celebrity box. Like, that, that's it. That's all I took out. He's officially... A misfit. That's it. It's, oh, it's, it's oh, official. Oh. Now. He ain't a professional. He can't go back to pro boxing. He can't. A lot he, of the comments he can't go back to pro boxing. A lot of the comments I see in boxing chat rooms, on um my my WhatsApp groups, on videos and social media, is that Tommy Fury is the worst boxer they've seen in their life. He ain't the worst boxer. No, seriously, that people are saying. Yeah. People are saying. I'm not. I'm not saying it personally. He ain't a boxer. Is They're he? saying he's the worst boxer they've seen. In life. He, ain't, he ain't a boxer. I tell you this. I find it very, 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 very hard to understand how Tommy Fury can't read a telegraphed overhand right. That's the only punch <laughs> KSI threw. KSI was standing like a like um a, a point start point fighting karate player, jumping around with the legs and the arms going like this, and then looping a he overhand was, right. Was, and Tommy Fury cannot see it. He wasn't. He wasn't. You know, I just think KSI isn't stupid. 
He's obviously watched some videos of Tommy Fury in my mind, and he he, he treated it like a. I mean, what was he? He's a computer game blogger or something. Yeah, something like that. That's how he started. Out. He treated it like a computer game to me. He <laughs> he just he, he spammed the button. He, he found some sort of technique to confuse his opponent to survive, and right. and it it kind of worked. But I don't say Tom, I won't, I'm not going to go into Tommy Fury being the worst. I just I, no, I'm, Fury, I'm just saying what I'm reading. Online. Tommy Fury. It just isn't a boxer, he's is he? He's limited. Yeah, he is in a boxer. He is uh, in a pro uh, boxer. I'm, he's proven it. I'm gonna twice give, that. I'm going to try and give Tommy Fury some advice. If someone throws an overhand right like that, you could cover up and no. go in Tommy Fury. and hit the shoulder over the shoulder. Tommy Fury don't need to worry about yeah. any of that. He doesn't need you to could, worry. You could step back from he, the shot. He doesn't, let him miss the shot and come over. He doesn't need to worry about any yeah. of that. He doesn't need to I, worry I, about I don't get how he can't see it. He doesn't need to how? worry about it. How right. can he see it? Right. He doesn't need to worry about it. It's basic. He doesn't need to worry about it. Because he'll be fighting misfits from now on. That's it. He'll be fighting misfits. I don't care. I he'll don't be fighting care. misfits. He won't be fighting. He, he, all the, what, where was his feet? The guy's diving in. Why don't you take a step to the side? All of that. It doesn't matter yeah. anymore. The punch stats were really, really low. Yeah? I think both of them threw, really? landed under 40 punches. Really? Low. Yeah, under 40 punches. But I reckon... What was it? Six rounds? Thir six, six, 37 seven. of those punches KSI threw was the same overhand right. And Tommy Fury could not see it. I, I, Every I, I, round, I don't get it. I Every don't get round it. started to see. And <laughs> finished the scene. Every round. Yeah, as you said, there's a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was an overhand. Yeah. Then there was hugging. We all know. We've all seen the memes and the video. That is it. Every round yeah. started to finish the scene. That like one you sent me yeah. earlier was pretty funny. <laughs> Every yeah. round started to finish the scene. So, um, and like you said, if I was a pro boxer, you see the difference. Like, whatever we may think about you know, my man Mayweather, when he fought Logan Paul, mm. you can see the difference in levels when somebody yeah. actually knows how to box because the size differential there is remarkable, massive, yeah? yeah? Shouldn't yeah. even happen. But you could see how he Again. moved in the ring, how he made some an amateur yeah. look like an amateur. Uh, uh, what we saw yesterday was... Yeah. <laughs> Again, not having a guy like Tommy Fury. You're the pro boxer. You're a bloody Fury. You are bigger, you are stronger, you have better technique. Your KSI is naturally a smaller man. He looked half the size of him in the ring and he couldn't deal with him. He couldn't read him and he, that's it. it was very, very, very basic. KSI is a good athlete, good fast twitch muscle. You know what I mean? Like he tried to be elusive by diving in and diving out, but it wasn't complicated to read. Yeah, you know, it was like jumping jacks. Oh, it was like the, the jumping jack style of boxing. Like, I, I, I'm confused. I'm so confused. Uh, I, 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 listen, as I said, I don't. I don't think it matters who won. I think <laughs> at the end of the day, KSI won whether the ref or the judges said he won or he didn't win because he's, he, Tommy Fury, went in there to retire um, yeah. misfit boxing. <laughs> KSI retired Tommy Fury as a serious fighter. That's what ended up happening. That's what I know. So he won. He won. Uh, uh, um, quickly, before we move on, how much of the card did you watch roughly? How much? Three fights, four fights, five fights, six I fights? I watched... Um, I was in and out. In and out. Um, so I watched the Taylor fight you mentioned when he drove straight in. Yeah, he went across the room. And yeah. the other guy looked like he had a bit of technique but couldn't yeah. get it out. All right, then. Um, so and we, then I watched... Um, so we started about the same time. There was an American guy who actually looked like he had a... He'd been coached quite well until he uh, got... We're going to talk about it in a minute. You're about coaching. But, okay, so you watch where I started. Roughly the same point. Yeah. What do you rate the card value out of 10? Was it... If it weren't the worst card you've ever seen, <laughs> you where mean, was it on the scale well, of, nah, of right. 1 to 2? Where was it nah, on the scale? It's 2, 2, 2. See, I'm, again, I'm going to be trying to be balanced, right? In terms of boxing... In terms of boxing, I can't read it in terms of... Why are you laughing? Let me get up this what's up. <laughs> Listen, in terms of boxing, I'll rate it at um, <laughs> maybe one and a half. Like, in terms of boxing, it's got to be like one and a half out of ten. But in terms of entertainment, probably a six okay. or a seven. Was it better than the last WrestleMania or Royal Rumble you ever watched? I haven't watched Shadow Name in a long time. Yeah, but was it better? No, no, but I, I, would rather watch, I would rather watch. I would rather watch some of the storylines. Some of the storylines. Exactly no, story, yeah, some of the storylines were, were as good. Yeah, some I, of the storylines were as good. So the Logan Paul, the storyline he built right. up, 
And then I, he started I, talking sorry. about devils and I, demons in his life and all that. Some of the storylines. I haven't watched the Royal Rumble for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. Yeah. I will watch this year's Royal Rumble, which I think is in January. Yeah. And then I will come back to you in January and tell you yeah. what was better. This card yeah, or the Royal yeah, Rumble. Yeah, because what I saw last night was absolute pants. Yeah, but that's not fair. Because this is like real... Like, I don't know. I, I'd like to get Izzard stage. They're actually fighting. It's two people in there fighting. Yeah, in the Royal Rumble, it's, it's choreographed, isn't it? It's like, it's different. Were yeah. choreographed dancing last night? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's something So the fighting, the like actual content, as I said, it's like about a one and a half. The fighting was terrible. The fighting was dreadful. We right. all know that, yeah? But the, the storylines, and there was a bit of intrigue and jeopardy because we watched it. Like, it's the first time I've really watched a Misfits event, but I did. Like you said, I stayed there and I watched it just to see the storylines plan. And some of, some of the fights, there was a bit of jeopardy. There was one, I said, there was one fight that was quite interesting. Yeah. It, was, it swung, there was, you know... All right, before we leave the misfit stories for the for the rest of the show, <laughs> you can't wait. These misfits guys are making some real money, and that's the other side. So I tell you why they're making real money. Yeah. Did you notice he was in the corner some of those fights? I saw Andre Rosier yeah. in the corner. I saw Malik Scott yeah. in the corner. Yeah. These are they're hiring world class trainers and flying them in from the states yeah. to the train money. these guys. Got the money. Got are the you money. serious? Got money. I, I see. I mean, if if you look at some of the ring walls, I mean. KSI came in with gigs, doing a full concert. In a Lamborghini. And a, and a Lamborghini. You know, these people got money. And that, he's, he's the mouth guard. They talked about it, having the diamonds. and So, that, you know. Uh, when you you have your own personal fortune, well done to those guys. I'm happy for them for, for nothing. what they've done. Like, nothing. No, when, when you, they, bought, they, they built their brand from scratch. So, um, well done to them. That like, 100% true. Well done to these guys. But to fly in world class trainers. That's going to say, all right, then I'm going to come and support this. You are paying out some serious money for that. Yeah. To have some, someone like that in camp for two, three, four, five weeks, yeah. whatever they trained for. Yeah. And so, guess what? Wait a minute. I'm not training my professional fighters, my world champions. I'm going to train these YouTubers. Money talks. Money talks. All right, then. Let's move on. We actually had some real fights on last night. Uh, I haven't got through all of them yet, but I know Mr. Charlie has. Yeah, so. Um... Where do we where do we start there? So, start in Australia. I know there was a fight. I think before that wasn't it, in terms of time timelines. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Pezzy, yeah, um, he he came out trying for, and I've got to give the guy credit because this year, if I get it, if I've got it right, that's probably his third fight. Yeah, third fight, and you know, decent level. I put it so he, he fought um, Ocampo. Mm -hmm. Mendoza yesterday, and who's he? I've forgotten the third fight, but they're, they're decent level yeah. opponents. Serviceable people that yeah, do so around so that bit, Fondora, yeah. Yeah, Fondora's yeah. to top, top the yeah. top ten gatekeepers. So he, yeah. he, he's he's and in, in a year, in one year, like you say, probably top ten fighters. He's fight in one year, yeah. in one year. So, so um, he, yeah, it's like one a quarter. Yeah. So he's been active. Um, how do you look technically? Because I didn't see the fight. Obviously, we've got to talk about Charlo coming back down and they've they got to unify and do whatever. He started off, he started off from... Again, this is early, early, early. And probably not up with my eye and do what else. He started off quite even. started off quite even. And then as you got to around the midway point, he started over. to take over. He started to take over. Started to get shots away. Real heavy shots. Heavy shots, heavy shots that, you know, probably... A, 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 a weaker man, like I said, because Mendoza is a decent level up, up yeah, and he's fought yeah. some big hitters as well. Yeah, he's yeah. a big hitter as well, so you could see that um, Tazu was thinking about what was coming back. Mm -hmm. He was smart enough to think about what is coming back, but he, he caught him um, Mendoza with some big shots. So for me, he looked impressive, and what I liked afterwards, I liked the interview afterwards, and him talking about, look, that's about it for me in Australia. I'm now looking to come to Vegas. So Good. even he's identified, Ambition. absolutely, even he's identified, you can't keep having his own fights and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got to look for the big ones in Vegas and he called out Charlo yep. and he was respectful with it. He said, you know, Charlo should be the number one at his weight class, um, 154, but um, 
he, he you know when he cut what he says he let's come back down and prove it you know come back down and prove your number one so he's saying you're number oh, one come back yeah. down and prove your number one didn't you know not, not yeah. a lot of trash talk he he, he was he, he kept it to the point and respectful and seemed that it seemed like quite an intelligent guy to be fair yeah. and impressive now, i'll get on that fight this evening make sure i watch that yeah, impressive any other fights we're worth, worth reviewing from last night um uh Yanabek. Yanabek. Yeah. um so that was on sky um oh well sky for us yeah but um um uh what's it uh the good performance he win what, what, what's that come on who's that who's the promoter that's sky um boxer no boxer. top rank top rank yes mm -hmm. sorry, top rank um again six rounds um to be fair it's one for me it was one-sided yeah and yeah, they're talking about him being um you know because from Kazakhstan being a new mm -hmm. GGG, um, he, he 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 looks he looks he looked impressive, but you know his opponent wouldn't say was was uh, his level. level his level yeah. Mm -hmm. um, before that fight, um, there was Keyshawn Davis. Again. Okay, uh, you know, he's got a lot of hype behind him. You know, again Mayweather yeah. has hyped him up previously. So um, I thought I, he did well. I think I expected more mm -hmm. because of the hype. But yeah, he came through, and again, um, I think it was a, a late stop. If you remember correctly, um, let's go with the news. <clears throat> a, a few bits to go through today, and I'm not too sure where to start. So the magnificent seven card. <clears throat> to rehash from what possibly had last time. This time, though. It's not more. Pro it's not prospects. <clears throat> it's more of a combination of different talent he has. Mm -hmm. Good card. Does it fit the market? Because I think it's very. I think it's very. <clears throat> I think it has value for money. For the pay paying public, I think it's a good card. What do you think? Um, I think it's a. Because you got some decent fights in there, but it to me it's almost like um, it's a. A boxing event, a proper boxing event. Yeah. For boxing fans, so you've got like Isaac Dogbo and people, you know. So they're not top echelon, but yeah. people that got a point to prove. A lot of boxers at fighters at crossroads. Yeah. A lot of crossroads fights. I think it's a card that showcases a lot of talent, and it's a type of card that you you go there to the arena early. I hate when we go to boxing boxing fights. The arena is half empty until the main event. You watch it on Sky. It wasn't yesterday at your Misfits event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was full when nobody went home. Yeah, <laughs> but it's one of the ones there where most times the arenas are empty. Mm -hmm. You watch a main fight, even in Vegas. Watch up to, up to the co-main event. That's when the crowd comes in. This is a fight that, this is a card that is made for real boxing fans. Mm -hmm. And I think Frank has done a bloody good job putting it to all together. In today's day and age, wow. even... You give them more than some credit for an undercard. Yeah, I am. In today's day and age, it's hard to get many up and comers or names on a card and pay them all a decent wage to sustain that card. Good point. It's not pay per view, yeah? It's on a standard TNT sports, yeah? That's what you want. You want a good, a good show that people will pay their money and enjoy and talk about after. It's not all about world titles, it's not all about this drama and that drama, it's about good quality competitive fights. That's what boxing's always been about. I think Frank's bringing that back with the show. No, it's a, it's a good point. It's a good pers you know, perspective, to be fair. It's, um, it, it's as uh, I couldn't agree more in terms of it's, a, it's a, a boxing connoisseur's event. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know how well it will do with gates and so forth. I guess if you've got that, that many fighters, it probably yeah. won't do too badly because you'll have the individual crowds for the individual fighters. Yeah. Um, so. It, each of them will sell a portion of tickets, so it probably be doing quite well um, in I'm, that sense. I'm not taking shots at any other UK promoters' cards, but there's been two or three cards over the past month or so where the undercards were really, really poor, and I think they may have spent more money on those cards than Frank may have spent with this card. You know what I'm trying to say? Well, yeah, because of, I get you saying, because of the main event. Because of the main event. So when you've got a world champion or a big fight which requires a bit of money, mm. And now, you know, so yeah, I think it's a pretty good card. All right then. 
That is the bars appeal. Sorry, I've got a cold. I've got a cold sweet in my mouth. <clears throat> Daniel yeah, Dubois. Whole country's got a cold. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Dubois appeal with the WBA has been rejected. This is not a con this is not even a conversation point, yeah. is it? Yeah. Right. And now so, it moves forward. It's not a conversation point. Yeah. We last week we're talking about how Fury and Usyk's been announced. Yeah. Why are we talking about this Daniel Daniel Dubois appeal? <clears throat> it's almost like a formality. So, so I'm gonna give you my prediction. For 2025, 2020, 2024, 2025. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Yeah. Okay. Here's my prediction. If Fury beats Usyk mm -hmm. in the rematch, because mm -hmm. it's a double way rematch, yeah. Daniel Dubois gets the next shot if he does not lose within the next eight hours. I don't think he will. Frank Warren will keep it in house. I don't think he will. He will keep it in house I and don't. say Daniel Dubois beat Usyk and was rubbed on the title. This is a big fight. I don't All he's going to do is match Dubois carefully up until that point. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I think Fury's going to struggle <laughs> to motivate himself to fight someone like Dubois. That's what you're, you're saying. I think that might. And I think there's some talk about if they don't fight um, Hergovic. Yeah. Um, that, that, belt. That, that belt's already stripped. Yeah, that belt's so, already stripped. It's a, double, it's a double rematch, which means as soon as the rematch is announced, the other is going to strip strip them. Which means Hergovic will fight for the title I, I think before I, that point. I think that fight will be so... I, I think, if it goes the way I think it will go, it will be so one-sided, there won't be any point in having a rematch. But let's see. Let's see. Yeah. But I think Frank Warren is going to keep his all in-house. Right now, he's playing with all the cards. And I think it's the first time in a long time that he's had the heavyweight division in his hand. Yeah, he's he's not gonna give it he's away. Got, he's got he's got not gonna give it away. I'm not gonna give it away, but it wasn't fine. Dubois. Why was Dubois in the first place? Like, well, uh, we know why Dubois was in the view. He put himself in that position. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, anyway. Right. While we're talking about Tyson Fury, we might as well stick with this thing. Garnu, did you see the preview this week for the for Fury and Garnu fight? The Fury, the preview everyone's calling the best fight preview ever. The trailer. Just, I saw a trailer. I'm trying to let's see. It was so memorable. I've even forgotten. Um, <laughs> where they were smashing and shaking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't get with the hype over it. It's, it's not a fight. It's a yeah, trailer. It's a hype up the fight. Yeah. I heard Frank no. Warren say something like it could be Oscar winning. Yeah. <laughs> that they really get excited. That I'm we real fight fans. Like a preview like that doesn't get me excited. I want to see the fight. I credit that they're putting a lot of money into the fight to promote it. Again, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's a crossover fight. Yeah. It's a crossover event. It's not really a, a fight. We're just waiting for this, hoping Fury gets through it so we can watch a proper fight with Usyk, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. It is, you know, it, uh, they, they, they're putting money behind it. They, they get, they're get getting everyone's, trying to get everyone's juices going. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be like watching Dillian Dallas first. <laughs> 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 mate, we said no more misfits, but you keep going back to it, mate. Yeah, it was a joke of a show, mate. All right, then. <laughs> Let's move forward. I saw something that kind of really upset me midweek. There was a fight announcement midweek for James Tony <laughs> to fight <coughs> Donovan Razor Ruddock in November. This is a real that was, fight. That was in Jamaica, is it? Is it in, Jamaica? in Jamaica, yeah. yeah. James Tony, who's one of my favourite fighters of all time, who man, respect, respectfully has been damaged by boxing. His voice, the way he speaks, is slurred and dragged out. And he's one of the most, best, most def, one of the best defensive fighters of his generation. And you've got Razor Ruddock, who I believe is 59 years old now. And... Hasn't been significant. I know apparently he had some fights seven or eight years ago, like a couple low key fights, but hasn't been significant in boxing since the nineties. What the hell is going on? Who is sanctioning this fight? So it's it's just an exhibition, though, isn't it? It's just an exhibition. It's not. You know, let these guys earn their money. No, but do you think do you think it's healthy? No, no, no. For no Razor Rudder, in Razor Rudder, no, all gentlemen be fighting. No, in all seriousness, no. No, it's not. I, I tried. I tried just for five minutes to try and justify it. But no, 
no, no, I, no. I, I hate mentioning this particular fight. No, they but did it. A year or 18 months ago, we had a 59 year old or 6 year old, Evander Holyfield, who's one of the best hitters of all time, came out of retirement for an exhibition fight against um, Vito Belfort, MMA guy, yeah, and, got, and got beat up real quick and embarrassed. Yeah. Right? Respectfully, regardless of skill level, People in their six, 59, 60 years shouldn't be fighting in compared to sports. No, they shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. It's dangerous. It, it might be a tip, tippy tappy exhibition. You hope it is. I got. Remember, you remember back in the day, James Tony sparring or uh, sparring? Yeah, James Tony be. never ever went tippy tappy. Yeah, but he can't be doing that now. No, uh, he can't bro, be doing that now. Bro, um, I, I am scared for both of them. Can't and I think that. this is a travesty to the sport. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know, really. Maybe he's buying them. I was going to say child support, but at 60, he must have paid all of that. Right? Yeah. So, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer. Yeah. I can't answer. Shocking. That. Shocking. And I, 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 I tell you what, <laughs> I watched that Misfit stuff. I ain't watching this fight. I'm not watching that. Uh, morally, you cannot watch it. It is so dangerous. It, they're, they're hurting the sport. Again. All right, then. Quick, before we go to the fight previews for next week, just to let you people know, on Tuesday will be the press conference for David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley. So Tuesday evening, uh, expect fireworks on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I can't wait for those two to get together. I think they'll behave themselves this time. They may behave themselves, but words are going to be shown. Uh, words are going to be heard. They had a full out brawl. Yeah, but I'm, I'm excited. They've got, to, you know, I think they they they're probably gonna be told to rein it in. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, well, maybe not as much money as yeah. the main event, but it's a, it's a it's a quite a, a big event in terms of boxing. That's the biggest event on the card. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all know that the Fury and Garner is the main event but in terms of boxing yeah. and, and what's at stake. That's the the biggest mm -hmm. event. Um, so, yeah, they can't. Yeah, there'll be words. I'm pretty sure, but um, I don't think they're gonna be doing what they did last time. I took mate. If, I'm not gonna lie, mate. If I if I get if I have the time on Tuesday, I might even try to get to that press conference. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> mate, I'm definitely definitely interested in this fight. Yeah, no, it's, 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 as I said I said already. Audley's got to do something. He's <laughs> got to do something. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go to next week's fights. Big week of fights in the UK for us next week. We've got Dan Aziz versus Joshua Boazzi. Mm -hmm. Massive fight. Where do you think this fight... How do you think the fight turns out? I mean, I'm stuck on two sides. I like Boazzi. I think technically he looks well. I think he boxes well. However, I think he hasn't matured as a fighter. I don't think he's been active enough. I think he thinks too much and doesn't react the way he, he doesn't react quick enough to scenarios. He's by far definitely a blue chip talent. But Aziz is coming to hurt. He wants to fight. Aziz, we've seen dig down and pull out fights. This could be a banana pill for Boazzi. His first legitimate banana pill. Um, I don't know. I, I I think I see it differently. Maybe I'm biased, but I think um, I, mean, I watched the gloves off between the two and some words exchanged. And I read a lot into people's words and body yeah. language. So I think I think you're right. But actually, does think too much. I think he does have. I think he has a really good trainer in in Virgil uh, Hunter, and I think. They talked about the sparring, mm. and I think it was clear that Boazzi got the better of Aziz in sparring. I think mean, they both admitted yeah. that. But what Aziz said is, when it comes to sparring, what, sparring, it, yeah, what it cut, but psychological in all sport. I mean, we talked about, and again, I don't want to go back to this whole mm -hmm. misfit thing, but you know, we talked about how poor um, Baby Fury was. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the 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 pressure and the crowd. Can make you do some strange things, you know. You yeah. can you, you what you may do in a uh, in, in sparring or doing training. When you get into that 
pressure cooker um, it can make you do some strange things and um, whereas Aziz was saying he wakes up yeah. when he, when there's some jeopardy and he's not great at sparring yeah. I think Bawaxi probably is the opposite yeah. but I think because of the familiarity I think Bawaxi would probably put it on him so that's what I would think what you're talking about is that phrase you had around the game you have gym fighters some fighters that are just on fire in the gym but they don't transcend it well over into the I think the, it's the other the way around fights. it's the other way around it's the other way around so I think Aziz is poor in the gym that's what he was saying yeah, yeah. but he's, he's, yeah. Good at, he's good good on fights that's what and saying. I think Bawaxi is the other way around where in the gym he puts it together but on fight night something well, he's missing. done it on fight night because he's an olympian and he's, no. he's done it but but in the professional right. he's not really you, hit those heights right. so do you think Bawatsi is where he should have been after his olympic run but some of that I think is behind schedule some of that that's what some, i heard does he say something around that as well but some of that is down to his promoters he's at yeah no. because he said he wants certain fights yeah. and they, they haven't happened no no there, there was definitely contention with the promoters because he was saying that we'll give you this fight if you sign the extension on top of it. Yeah. So again, I understand that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's Even his fault. Even before that, he's had fights. But he's however, had in his performances, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not clicked together yet. I see it like you've got um, two pieces of Lego and where someone goes, click, rush is kind of like this, then click. Like it's, it's just not clicking the given, way it's supposed to You've got to, to be given that jeopardy as well. If you're fighting this level of... The level of opponent he's been fighting, he's been doing enough to win. He's been doing enough to win. But is there not anything that gets your juices going? So, as a fighter as well, it's like we watch people, like we watch people over the years, like, um, you know, we talk about even Tyson Fury. Yeah. yeah and we talk, and like, I remember saying to you, I think he will do something to Klitschko. Yeah. And we were, well, he's done nothing up to this point to yeah. say that he will. But you look at his size yeah. and, you know, so to give you certain some... fighters... Certain fighters, yeah. sometimes you have to give uh, them an opponent that says, let's yeah. get the best out right. of it. So to give you credit for you would one of the only few people who I knew that predicted Fury to give, to beat Vladimir. Well, congrats on that. But Fury was slightly different. And once Fury was slightly dis different, Fury had the size, he had the youth, he had the yeah. training with Emmanuel Stewart back in the day. There was elements where you could see, all right, then we have an understanding. I remember Avery with Emmanuel Stewart saying, Fury, this and X, Y, Z, and so mm -hmm. and so. So you, I can see those elements. I don't think we have that with Aziz. I think sorry, sorry, we've actually. I think, I think Virgil, Virgil, Hunter, have that. Virgil Hunter said that uh, there's, 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 he said there's, there's tools there. Yeah. And I think he stayed with him I, this long because there is something no, there. See, here's the thing about Virgil Hunter. Great trainer. But some trainers are more mental and some trainers are more physical. Virgil Hunter is a very analytical guy. He's the guys that say you have to live and breathe boxing in terms of your hair in the evening. We're watching fight clips together. Yeah. We're breaking things yeah. down. The philosophy of boxing, how to hit and not get hit. He's working your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Bawatsi goes to America, but he's not in America. Yeah? I, I think someone like Virgil Hunter's style of training, just like we had Amir Khan, you need to be with the guy 24-7, day in, day out, living the life. When you're in another country, you can't get that. When you've got a physical trainer who's going to give you drills and this and that and pad work and do this, do that, all physical stuff, you could do that anywhere. You could do that over Zoom. But when you've got an analytical guy who's talking and showing you stuff and pointing stuff out and says, we watched these fights last night, you saw this last night, we're going to work on that today in the ring and here's how we're going to do it, you can't be in the UK for that. I think you can. It depends how intelligent the fighter is. It depends how intelligent the fighter is. And I think he's, he's both... Right, see, they're quite intelligent people. Yeah. So I think if if you are intelligent, you can take a message from someone and you can work on things away from that individual because you can manage yourself. If you're disciplined and intelligent, you can do that. If you're, I think, if you lack discipline and no disrespect to a, a degree mm. of intelligence, I think then you're right. You need to be in the coach's yeah. pocket. So I, I think... Whereas I don't think Virgil Hunter is for everyone, so you're talking about Amir Khan, yeah. who's not that bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no disrespect, no, no disrespect. Yeah, <laughs> but when you talk about an Andre Ward and Bratz is not that level, but mm -hmm. you know somebody who's intelligent, I think you can work around that. Yeah. Um. So it, it remains to be seen. But the point I'm trying to make is, we can't. I don't want to be too harsh on him because. And I look at him, and I think more of an issue for me is his size. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't think he's a big light heavyweight. Yeah. For me, that's more of an issue for me. But I think in terms of his um, whether he's where he should be, mm -hmm. I think that. You know, I think it's a bit early, not early, because he's, he's, he's been around for a while, but I, I, I think it's a bit harsh to say he's not because I don't <laughs> think the opportunity's come yet. I don't think the opportunity's come yet. I think someone like no. Andy Yard mm -hmm. has had opportunities, yeah. just fallen short, sure. but had the opportunities, he, whereas right, something have been presented to yeah. Bawatsi. So again, like I said, I like Bawatsi. I think when I hear him, when I watch him, when I watch him train, when I see the things he does, the way he carries himself, the way he talks, all admirable. I don't think he's a bad fighter. I think he's a good fighter. But like I said, it hasn't all clicked yet. And as it's not all clicking right now, yes, we want to see that development. But this could be tricky. This could be tricky. This could be more tricky than people are... Okay, promotion is selling as a 50-50 fight. Mm -hmm. But boxing fans, we've seen all the fights. We've seen all the magazines fights. We've seen all the Black Seas fights. We can see what we see. And obviously... With the fans, the favour is on Boatsy side. Mm. I think people are sleeping. I think they're sleeping. They're missing a massive shot here. I think on current form, you see more from Aziz recently than Boatsy. You get what I'm trying to say? Think, yeah. But, yeah, I, I but think they're sleeping. Boatsy, but Boatsy's, um, Aziz's style, that pressure, I think, I think we'll see something, put, like we'll see you, something pushed you, out of, of yeah. Boatsy that, I think Boatsy could punch. Do, you, do, do I think he's a devastating killer puncher? No. no. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. You're thinking that, okay, Zim's coming in and can try and walk onto one. All right, then. He might do. He might but do. I don't see it happening that Boatsy's not that type of puncher. You don't. We, <laughs> As I said, no, no. sometimes you can use people's momentum against them when mm. you're punching. You know, yeah. your timing is as, as, as Time powerful. is the key, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as powerful as, as sometimes the punch. So we'll see I mean that's what makes it interesting that's what makes it um, a fight that we'll definitely watch people want to watch um, in terms of pedigree there's no comparison you'd say yeah, Barassi is, yeah. is, is head and shoulders yeah. but, but like you say he's done, 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 done the hard route though he's gone through all the levels all the way up this is again the conversation it's like he's done the, he's done the hard route but it's and yeah but, but, but see you can't knock a man for having you know, and I like I like the way both of them talk because yeah. I think they both come the yeah. hard route. Yeah, I think they both both come, come, both come the hard route, but the different paths. But the one's come the hard route with no money. One's come the hard route through the Olympic. It has, but that's because of talent. You can't knock a man like. No, I'm not knocking him. Yeah, knocking no, him. no, but you're yeah. saying yeah, it's still a hard route for me. But it's just because he has that natural talent. Yeah, so someone's backed him because he has the natural talent. Whereas the other one, like he said, he openly admits he went in the gym, said, "Oh, I have a guy this got." tumped up a couple of times and he's, he's worked his way yeah, through. I agree. So I, I understand what you're saying, but Boatsy's not, it's not been easy. It's just that he has natural talent and that natural talent meant that he, you're right, he got maybe sponsored a bit more than somebody who came, the, the right amateur part, you know, and, and a local gym walked in and all that good stuff, you know. All right. So you're clearly going for Boatsy. I have to go for Boatsy. Yeah. To me, it sounds like you're going for a stoppage. I don't no no I I wouldn't say a stoppage I I no I think Aziz is a tough 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 fight yeah. and I don't think like when two mates fight I think there's a lot of pride in there yeah. there's a lot of pride and you'd be amazed how how far that pride takes you there there ain't no um, no disrespect no, Dubois no heart here this is <laughs> these guys you know will go to the end I think so you're going points then. What, close competitive or Bawatsi kind of in a... I think it'll be competitive, but I think Bawatsi will... Um, what, eight rounds to four? Or, seven, five? Yeah, something like that. I think his class should should shine through. And I think he'll be confident because of what the what he knows from the sparring. I know they yeah. didn't show it their hand, or he didn't show his hand, mm. but I think he will do. And I think that will give him a little edge. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to the line. Um, I genuinely think... The team's going to put the pressure on and make the fight. I think I think, I think Barassi's going to be on the back foot and he's going to be behind on points going up to the halfway mark. And then, as you mentioned, the class technique will come into it 
and bring it close down the line. Um, I'm thinking very close, i.e. split decision type close. Seven rounds to five either way. And I, I, I find it hard to call. Not that I want to sit. Not that I want to sit on the fence. I think. Yeah. I think if the judges call like, it. if the judges call like, it. it's gonna be a close fight. If the yeah. judges like aggression, yeah, and someone that's controlling the center ring, ring generalship, they're gonna side with Azim. If they're looking for, if they like the, if they like the cleaner, classier shots, smoother punching, they're gonna favor Bawatsi. Um and I really think it's in the judges' hands. Uh, I don't think, I think it's going to be one of those fights like I said, there's pride, they're mates, they don't want to lose the bragging rights of who's the better one. They're both going to fight down to the line and I think it's going to be down to the judges on what style you like. I don't think it's a fight where you're going to even split them up. No, I, I think you're right. Uh, well, it'll be, yeah, it'll be close, but they'll definitely be, yeah, they're both going to war. And the one thing I'd say, the other thing I'd say is, um, this is good for boxer because they've been they need it yeah they've been taking a lot they need of it. i don't say l's yeah. but it has a b rate and this is a this puts them on the map a bit because there's a lot yeah. more, there's a lot going on yeah. elsewhere and um yeah they need this and also before i forget on the undercard chamberlain versus the wow can't wait for that one as well yeah you mentioned this you said there's been a bit of a yeah it's a bit, a bit of to and fro in yeah. between the two yeah there has been but, um but uh, you see with me with chamberlain no, we watched um, yeah, Chamberlain and Akoli yeah, yeah, yeah. battle of Hackney versus Brixton. But, um, but, 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 but that, that was yeah. I Chamberlain, mean, Jamie it let me down. So yeah. uh, him talking, he's got he's got to he's got to win back uh, a bit of trust. He's done a, he's done a lot of work since that time, but um, I think it's a real fight. I'm looking forward to that one for sure. He's got to win back a bit of trust for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's still scarred from that one. <laughs> yeah, he did a lot of talking and let me down. So I need him to. To, to show me something before I yeah. start believing his words. All right then, people. That's it for this week in boxing. Thank you for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe, and we catch you next week. Yeah, hopefully recovered, fully recovered. Yeah, both. <laughs> <of us. laughs> Have a good week, brothers. All right.